Hello, Journey friends. Welcome back to this week's Along the Journey. Well, a bit like peeking out of the trailhead following a long walk in the woods, we are nearing the end of this blue year. We've reached the final section, four units on the pursuit of godly parenting. And we're not done yet because for most of us, this section can be some of the most important material of the entire year. And what I really like about this material in the blue year is it is an emphasis on the purpose and the use of our homes. What we're going to find is that our home is intended to be a school. It is intended to be a hospital. It is intended to be a mission and it is intended to be a church. And in this first week, our home as a school, a place to learn, we're going to begin with the idea that's just straight out of uh, the Old Testament in the Shema, where we find out that the Lord, our God, hear, O Israel, the Lord is one, uh, to, to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and all your strength. But then beyond that, to remember these commands. Keep them in your heart. Teach them diligently to your children. Speak of them when you sit down in your house, when you walk along your way, when you lay down, when you rise. Teach them diligently to your children. And so this week, unit one of section seven, teaching our children our home is a place of learning. That's right, this week we're in the blue year, section seven, unit one, your home is a school, a place to learn. And before we get going, I will qualify again like I try to do each year. Uh, you may be thinking, oh, this is a section on parenting. I'm not a parent, I'm not even married. My children are grown. I don't plan on having kids. This material is for you, trust me. Whether you're speaking life and instruction into parents that you do know, whether you have influence as a caretaker or a grandparent, an aunt or an uncle, whether you're a teacher or a neighbor, the opportunity to speak life into children, to train them up in the way that they should go uh, is a wonderful opportunity. And this material over the next four weeks is gonna enable all of us to do that. And this week, as we look at section uh, seven one, the first one is our home is a school. We're going to start with the perspective that Paul gives us on how we really think about our children. What is it that we're, we're raising up and training up? And I think it's a great perspective. He writes the Thessalonians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, 17 through 20. And he's talking about being torn away from them, uh, that he's tried again and again to come and be with them, but it just hasn't been possible that really Satan is even behind keeping them apart. And he says, because, uh, because what is, he says, what's my joy and my hope, my crown of boasting before the Lord? It's, it's you. Is it not you? <laughs> you? You are my hope and my joy and my crown of boasting. For you are our glory and our joy. What a perspective that we should have for our children. Our children being raised up in a godly manner, uh, following Jesus Christ, confessing and living a life that is in obedience to Him. As, as our disciples coming from our home, they are our crown of boasting. They are our joy and our hope. That's, that's the perspective that we should have on our children, that we see, this, uh, see the end uh, in mind as well. And so with that, three emphasis this week that I would encourage you to think about as you go through this unit. The first is, as you think about your house and your home, right? What's your house? Well, your house is the structure, the foundation, the framework, the roofing and the shingles and everything, the shelter, right? But your home, your home is the relationships within that shelter. And so the first point this week is an exercise that asks you to think about if the walls of your house could talk, what would be their comments on the home that you are uh, living in? What are their comments about uh, what goes on, the quality of, of communication and interaction between you and your children? It asks you to think about five adjectives. Do, does, do the walls observe patience, impatience? Uh, do they observe fun-loving or do they in, in observe a lot of tension? Uh, is there compassion? Is there grace? Uh, is there a performance-driven culture in your home? What are those five adjectives? Some of them are going to be wonderful. Some of them you really need to reflect on is, yeah, that's probably what the walls would say. And I don't want that to be the case. 
So think about that. The, the second item this week uh, is great. Four principles that really associate, so it makes this correlation between a school and a home, a godly home. Uh, the first is this idea of the primary teacher. Who's the primary teacher of your children? Well, it's the parent. Yes, the church. We, we, are, we, are, uh, we have great uh, uh, responsibility and a great pleasure uh, to privilege to come alongside you, but we are an assistant to your teaching. Uh, we do not replace the parent. That is the role of the mom and dad in the home, the teaching of their children in the Word. Uh, if you think, well, I'll teach them everything else, but I'll leave all the spiritual matters to the church. No, you are the primary teacher in their spiritual education. And we have to grasp that and we have to take that on with great passion. The classroom, well, classroom is just life itself in the home. Uh, the classroom are these informal uh, talking sessions, you know, teaching moments. That's the classroom. When you have an opportunity to share with them uh, how the Lord is working in your life, what is your testimony? How, how might scripture apply to a situation that they're currently going through? That's the classroom of your home. Thirdly, uh, the curriculum. Well, the curriculum is God's word. God's truth is the, is the core curriculum uh, for raising up your children in your home. Uh, they lead to the values that you're trying to build up in your children and teach. And that's where we get those. In fact, it asks you in that section, can you rattle off the values uh, that you're trying to teach your children that are based on God's word? And then the last one is the lecture itself. Uh, and I love this idea. You know, we give a lecture in really everything we do as the primary teacher in the classroom of our home. That our students are watching us, even our adult students and children are watching us. That when we uh, run a red light or we ignore a posted speed limit, our lecturer is saying, yeah, that's okay, go for it. When we uh, have fun and embrace life, our lecturer is saying, okay, that's, that's what I want to do as well. When we treat our spouse with either dignity or disrespect, that's the lecture that we are teaching that day. When we, um, when we uh, enjoy the relationship with God or we ignore the relationship with God, that's the lecture that we're teaching. So that's a great, those four principles are really wonderful as you look through them. And then the third point this week is on the equipping section. Uh, the, back to the values piece, but now let's ground it in scripture. What are the five biblical values that you want to pass on to your children, to your students? Write those five out. What scripture might speak to those? And then what's the eternal significance of those values? That uh, upon graduation, for which there's really no graduation except for uh, that first high hurdle of sending them out as mature adults, uh, the, the real goal of, of parenting is sending them out as spiritually mature adults. Um, what are those five biblical values that you hope that they are taking with them? Prayerfully uh, that they are taking with them. So take a look at that. And this week, I hope that it's a wonderful start on this final section and that uh, your home uh, is filled with much teaching and much learning and much loving of God and others. Blessings, friends.